Scientists assert that they have discovered the origin narrative of the Great Sphinx in Giza, Egypt. Although historians concur that ancient stonemasons chiseled the sculpture's face, since the 1980s, scientists have postulated that the Sphinx's general outlines were created by desert winds. A recent study by New York University put that hypothesis to the test by employing fluid dynamic to create tiny, lion-like clay sculptures. They discovered that the Sphinx might have been influenced by the rock's natural shape by the Egyptians. Our findings suggest a possible origin narrative for how Sphinx-like formations can come about from erosion, stated lead scientist Professor Leif Ristroff. Our lab tests demonstrated that materials being eroded by rapid flows can, in fact, produce surprisingly Sphinx-like shapes. The team relied on a notion put forth by geologist Farouk El Baz in 1981, according to which wind damaged the Sphinx formation from its original flat-top shape over time. According to the former NASA scientist, the architects of the pyramids understood these natural occurrences and purposefully created their sharp stone structures like the hills to remain. The Giza pyramids now coexist peacefully with their windy surroundings, Elbaz said in a 2011 statement. The destructive forces of wind erosion would have long since destroyed the ancient monuments if they had been constructed in the shape of a cube, a rectangle, or even a stadium. Additionally, he postulated that the Giza Plateau may have given rise to a yardang, which are peculiar rock formations seen in deserts that are caused by wind-blown sand and dust that have been organically sculpted by the wind. Its head might have been reshaped to resemble their king by the ancient engineers, Elbaz said. Additionally, they gave it a convincingly lion-like body, drawing inspiration from shapes they saw in the desert. They had to excavate a moat around the natural protrusion in order to do this. The Yardangs were repeated in the present investigation. In order to do this, the team combined soft clay mounds with firmer, less erodible materials to create formations that together reflected the former eastern Egyptian terrain. After that, in an attempt to mimic wind, they pounded these formations with a swift-moving torrent of water which sculpted and deformed them until they took on the look of a sphinx. A number of other characteristics, including an undercut neck paws spread out in front on the ground, and an arching back arose as a result of the harder or more resilient material becoming the lion's head. According to Ristroff, our findings offer a straightforward origin theory for how sphinx-like formations can arise from erosion. Our findings are supported by the fact that yardangs resembling seated or lying animals do exist today. Given that the work highlights the fact that rock formations are not uniformly or homogeneously composed, geologists may find it helpful as well. How the flows are redirected around the harder or less erodible parts is what creates the unexpected shapes. Most Egyptologists believe that the Great Sphinx represents King Khafre in some way. Some others think that Jadefre, Khafre's older brother, constructed the Sphinx in memory of Khufu, his father. Based on this, the construction period would have been between 2550 and 2450 BC. The scant evidence, therefore, that connects Khafre with the Sphinx is confusing and circumstantial. Up until the year 1817, when the Italian archaeologist Giovanni Battista Caviglia's excavation crew discovered the beast's chest, the Great Sphinx remained undiscovered. Furthermore, the chest, paws, altar, and plateau were not fully apparent until 1887.